Stand-up comedy has been around since the days of the court jester, increasing in popularity as nightclubs, radio, and especially television became more widespread. Along the way, there have been many legends, including Bob Hope. But I do want to tell you that it's a thrill being here because television, I understand, is a combination of radio and pictures. Milton Berle. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Before, before I go any further, I want to say that Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher asked me to announce that in spite of their recent marriage, they're still the very best of friends. <laughs> Sid Caesar. I mean, uh, today, I mean, you, this is the 20th century, boy. Today, uh, women are treated just like human beings. That's all. <laughs> and Red Skelton. It's really been hot out here in California, you folks that are coming out. We went swimming on Sunday, and my wife wore one of those new sack swimming suits, you know? <laughs> she got arrested for seining without a license. <laughs> but in the late 50s, a daringly different generation of stand-ups emerged in sharp contrast to the older, more traditional take-my-wife-please comedians. This new group tackled such previously taboo subjects as sex, race, religion, and drugs, and ushered in an avant-garde era of comedy that was decidedly more cerebral, satirical, and improvisational than audiences were accustomed to. <laughs> comedy may get more outrageous as the limits of taste are tested, but one simple truth never seems to change. People like to laugh. <laughs> 